live from Las Vegas, this is me. The breaking news at the top of seven and also heading to the hospital after a shooting and a North Las Vegas neighborhood locked down right now. Police and fire crews are on the scene and News 3 has full team coverage. We begin with News 3's John Trainer. He's live near Canyon Springs High School. John, what have you learned? Well, directly across the street from Canyon Springs High School, you can see the neighborhood behind me. I'm going to take you right there as this police investigation is ongoing right now. So what we've heard is reports of a 911 call about an hour to an hour and a half ago. That was a domestic related incident, as neighbors have told us. When the police arrived on scene, they evacuated this entire neighborhood as there were reports. Again, this is from neighbors and that 911 call that the man inside was holding a gun to a woman's head before the woman fled her home and made that 911 call. We've heard reports that there were children in the house as well. While police were on scene, Shots were fired. As many as three or four is what neighbors heard. We've heard reports that the suspect was down. We've heard unofficial, unconfirmed reports that an officer may have been injured as well. That obviously the most grave situation you can ask for in a crowded neighborhood. But I want to give you an idea of exactly where we are just over here is Canyon Springs High School. This, this park is where those neighbors were evacuated. Football practice was going on. This was an extremely busy time of day, which heightens the danger and heightens the awareness and alertness from those police officers. Right now, the tactical unit has wrapped up here. It looks like the investigation is wrapping up as well. We will have a live report as soon as we get an official update from North Las Vegas Police, which could happen in any moment now. John Trainer, News 3. Guys. Thank you, and Sky 3 is over the scene right now. Exclusive aerial images of a neighborhood in Lockwood right now. A lot of people at those rooftops afraid, and those coming home finding they may not be able to get in. Ian Lash, do you see any sort of traffic back up as people try to get home after work? Well, Reed, as you can see here, it doesn't look like there's any traffic back up here on Alexander. You can see the area that is uh, locked down there and that has been evacuated. This is the... Uh, extent of the scene or where the investigation is going ongoing right now uh, you can see that SWAT kind of see that SWAT still in the area right there they got it completely blocked off and that is uh, coming off of Alexander there into the neighborhood that is where but other than that there's no other traffic tie ups in the area now uh, John did tell you they were waiting for confirmation and North Las Vegas did tweet out that one of their officers was involved in a shooting and has been transported to UMC with non life threatening injuries so I just wanted to express that that he was transported with non life threatening injuries to UMC and the male that was involved in that gunfire exchange has deceased and um, we did see a video of the EMTs uh, working on him earlier and uh, he is uh, the body is still on the scene waiting on the coroner so that's what we have here still an active investigation is going to be ongoing late into the night I'm sure as they want to make sure everything that they can get in this investigation as quickly as possible and as right as possible so it will be a very thorough investigation in this area Reed. All right, Ian, thank you so much. And when Ian talks about the body there on the scene, we're talking about the person that was in the tangle, the dust up with the police officer, one person dead, but that is not an officer. That officer transported to UMC. And that's where we find Christine Kim. Christine's at UMC where that officer is being treated right now. Christine, what can you tell us? Right, we have confirmed, as you said, North Las Vegas police said that a police officer was shot during that barricade situation where there was an exchange of gunfire. What we know of that officer's condition is that he was taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. And we are told that Metro actually assisted in bringing the officer here to UMC. Now, we did see some of the Metro patrol cars here earlier, about 15 minutes ago. They have since left. We also saw, saw some North Las Vegas police officers arrive here at the hospital as well, but not a lot of patrol cars at the front entrance here, but we'll try to look into any more details. But again, one North Las Vegas police officer taken to UMC with non life threatening injuries. Back to you. And that definitely is the good news. We know that these officers all really around the country have been in such tense, uh, tense, tense moments because of what they've seen these shootings, what they call attacks against their own. And yet again, here we see an officer taken to the hospital after responding to a domestic dispute 
what should be a relatively normal call. And really, this affects two departments because we've got North Las Vegas and their officer involved, Metro assisting there in that area. And this is going to be a long night for these officers who will no doubt be on the scene to investigate. And one of the officers who's there is standing by very near where Gerard Romalo is positioned. And Gerard, we understand that at any minute police are going to tell us a little bit more about what happened inside this domestic situation. Well, we're waiting for official word from the uh, public information officer here. Uh, our situation is uh, actually on the uh, property of the uh, Canyon Springs High School, and this is where North Las Vegas has set up a command post. You can see this is uh, essentially a staging area where all of the uh, local authorities are gathering and sort of assessing the situation. We have North Las Vegas obviously in charge, but we have Metro here assisting, as was mentioned, and also lots of emergency services personnel as well. There are quite a few ambulances here probably just in case uh, other uh, situations arise out of this. We've also learned that at least a two block area here directly across from the school, we're talking about uh, the area of Cheyenne and Alexander, has been evacuated as a result and it remains evacuated. A lot of those residents kind of trickling through this parking lot right now really waiting for word on when they will be allowed to return to their homes. Now, uh, typically what happens, uh, as John Trainer reported uh, a little bit earlier, it sounded like the situation was wrapping up in terms of the immediate threat. But what happens afterward is police will go in, they're armed, the SWAT teams will go in, and they will make a threat assessment. They're going to search the home of the uh, incident in question, but they're also going to search the surrounding area. John also mentioned that there were children in the area. So they're going to be looking for other potential potential problems, uh, other potential threats before they give the all clear. And then once that clear is given, they're going to come back out to the staging area, make the announcement, and then allow those residents to get back to their homes. Uh, again, about a two block area that has been evacuated. But we are waiting uh, for the public information officer to arrive. He will also be assessing the situation and give us an update here in just a few minutes. I'm Gerard Ramal reporting live. Uh, Reed and Marie, we'll send it back to you. And Gerard, as we look at these exclusive images coming to us from Sky 3 of that neighborhood in lockdown, a question for you. John mentioned earlier that this happened during Canyon Springs football practice, just a stone's throw away from where you stand. We know that the neighborhood has limited access and is locked down. Were any of those football players made to stay on the property at Canyon Springs for their own safety? Have you been able to deduce that this evening? Well, what I understand as, as far as what's happening out here, some of the uh, residents have actually been evacuated to this location. They have a good section uh, of streets that are blocked off, taped off, if you will, and they're not being allowed into that area. So if there were some kids out here for football practice, they were probably uh, told to stay in this area, at least for the time being, as uh, was a, a number of residents as well. So that's basically the situation here, Reed. Mm. All right, so a frightening situation for the neighborhood there. We certainly thank all of our colleagues out in the field gathering all the information that's coming in minute by minute. But to just recap here, an officer now sent to the hospital how sent to the hospital after a family is terrorized in what has been described as a domestic violence situation, some sort of domestic dispute. This man holding a woman at gunpoint, we understand. Kids there at the home. Mm. Uh, she managed to go out, call 911, and that is when the shootout uh, occurred between police and this, this suspect. We understand the suspect is dead. The officer is expected to be okay. A North Las Vegas officer helped to the hospital with emergency crews and Metro Police also assisting. News 3 continuing coverage of this officer involved shooting and the officer hospitalized coming up. We'll be right back. Live images from Commerce and Alexander neighborhood in lockdown after an officer is hurt while responding to a domestic dispute. All of the makings of a tragedy here. You had that domestic dispute. You had uh, some sort of a dust up between a North Las Vegas police officer and a man. We're told this happened. The man apparently holding a woman at gunpoint in front of children. So can you imagine the tense situation that officers faced? And in the end, one person is dead. We are told that that is the suspect who started this whole thing. The officer also was hit by a bullet. We understand minor injuries though. He will survive or she will survive. We don't know a lot about the officer, but that officer rushed to the hospital and North Las Vegas police officer taken by emergency crews and Metro police also in tow assisting yeah, on this the, one. Their, their colleagues across city 
lines there helping out. All right, moving on to other news tonight where a gruesome discovery made by a water district worker, a body found inside a duffel bag. Well, that duffel bag, we understand, was found inside an underground vault. That's according to Metro Police. Officers responded to an area near Nellis and Boulder Highway around 1 o'clock this afternoon. Homicide detectives say based on the decomposition of the body, it could have been there for at least a month. Police closed southbound Nellis between Twain and Flamingo for several hours while they investigated. It's since reopened that area, and we'll have more on this story coming up tonight on News 3 Live at 11. Breaking news out of the San Francisco Bay Area. One person killed after a car crashes into a gym in Livermore. About 20, 25 minutes away outside of San Francisco. Police say an 80-year-old woman accidentally drove her car through the gym's glass entrance. Investigators say it happened while she was trying to park. She instead accelerated forward and her car crashed into an exercise room inside that building. Six people were hurt and taken to nearby hospitals. One of them died while being treated at the hospital. We now know what caused the death of a local teenager who fell from a moving car in a parking lot at Durango High School. The coroner confirms that 16-year-old Danya Bidapur died of blunt force head trauma. Police believe she was thrown onto the street back on August 6 when the vehicle suddenly swerved as she was hanging on to a luggage rack of that car. She was taken to University Medical Center in critical condition and died two days later. There are now 15 candidates trying for the Republican nomination. Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker dropped out Monday, making him the second casualty in the GOP contest. And today, our Jeff Gillen went out to see the state of the Republican race in Nevada. We didn't back down. We stood up and won those battles. Scott Walker, we hardly knew you. I don't care if it's a Republican or a Democrat. Just two visits to Nevada before he dropped out. Former Governor Bob List was his Nevada campaign chairman. Trump and Carson are just taking so much oxygen out of the room that there isn't enough uh, for anybody else to breathe. Still breathing in Nevada, these folks, these campaigns have teams on the ground or will get some soon. And for all the candidates, the clock is ticking. The Republican caucus is 154 days away. Tuesday, February 23rd, we are the fourth state in the selection process, the first in the West. I think there are a lot of campaigns trying to mobilize voters in Nevada. I know Jeb Bush is doing a really good job of it. He'd be biased. Ryan Irwin heads up the Bush campaign in Nevada. Bush, with deep pockets, has money to continue. He'll need it. This is a marathon, not a sprint. And with too many people, according to Las Vegas and Republican Susan Peck. I think there's an awful lot of candidates running, and I'm not, uh, I haven't chosen anyone. I'm not sure that I won't even be an independent by the time this is all over. We found Republican Alec Pickett waiting for his wife. He had a message for his party. Go back to being about business, small government, military, and don't worry about the Bible, don't worry about guns, don't worry about abortion. Get off those topics. We'll see if they listen as they fight for the Nevada vote. Jeff Gillen, News 3. All right, we continue to follow this developing story, breaking news, a shooting that sent one officer to the hospital and a suspect dead. We have an opportunity now to hear a little bit more. Yeah, North Las Vegas police speaking out about one of their own. Let's listen in. Las Vegas involving an officer involved shooting. Our officers went up there this afternoon for a domestic situation. And I have to apologize right now because I'm going to have to let people at that scene give you the specifics of what occurred up there. But what I can tell you is ultimately there was a confrontation with a suspect and that suspect is deceased. Two of our officers suffered non-life threatening injuries and were transported to UMC trauma. They are here now for treatment and they should recover. Can you talk about the injuries? You said non-life threatening injuries, but specifically how were they injured? Well, I can tell you that everyone's injuries are gunshot injuries. I don't want to be any more specific than that at this time because, again, this just happened. Our officers just got here. They're getting fantastic treatment here at UMC, and, and they're going to be okay. Every time something like this happens with one of our officers getting injured in a police shooting, there is a big um, presence here with law enforcement. You guys are like a family. Are you seeing that here as well? Yes, we, we have really good relationship, obviously, with Metro and the other law enforcement in the, in the valley and also with UMC. The turnout here is always really good. 
When I went in with the officers as they arrived here, I can tell you that UMC staff was right there on the spot to accept them. And if ultimately the other, the suspect in this had, had been able to be transported, they were ready to, 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 to accept him as well. Unfortunately, he, he didn't uh, survive his injuries. Can you talk about the officers who've been admitted at, at UMC? Um, how long have they, they been serving at North Las Vegas Police? And you know, I wish I could give you that, but I, I, I know them personally, but I don't know the details of how long they've been here. Um, they're both veteran officers and, and uh, have been on for close to a decade at least with one and, and over a decade with the other. Do they have families, children? Yeah, now you're asking me stuff that I really don't know. I'm just, I can tell you that we do have family that has shown up here to be, to be with their loved one, and I, I want to reassure the public that the officers are going to be okay. All right, that's good news to hear. So we're going to send it back to you, Reed and Marie. So again, two North Las Vegas police officers taken to UMC with, thankfully, non-life-threatening injuries. Christine, thank you so much for that information. And if you could just ask uh, Lieutenant Bedwell one quick question, how long will this neighborhood that we're looking at live via Sky 3 right now, how long will that neighborhood be in lockdown? They want me to ask you, do you know how long that neighborhood will be in lockdown? I suspect that the, there will be a lockdown on that neighborhood for several hours. This is going to be a lengthy investigation. There was a lot to this. There was the crimes that occurred before the officers even got there that have to be investigated. And again, it is a death investigation at this point. So I, I would tell everyone to try to avoid that area. If you live right next door or close by, you may not even be able to get home at this point, but you can always go up and ask an officer if that's necessary. All right, thank you for your time, Lieutenant Tim Bedwell with North Las Vegas Police Department. Back to you guys. All right, Christine Kim, thank you so much. A long night for officers investigating this deadly police shooting. The person deceased, the suspect involved in a domestic dispute. And what we just learned from Lieutenant Bedwell is that there were actually two officers who were hurt in this. Now we understand they are expected to survive, but still nevertheless a frightening situation. These officers just going there to help. We understand it was a woman and her children at the mm. time. They were facing a a man who had a gun. Officers had to do what they had to do in that case, and ultimately two officers getting hurt in the process. Well, and it's a big neighborhood. It's under lockdown, and those who are not able to get into their homes tonight will probably spend a lot of hours on the sidewalk. And we turn now our focus to our weather because we understand that changes could be coming across Southern Nevada. News 3's Chloe Beardsley is here. And Chloe, any rain going to fall on the people who can't get in their neighborhood tonight? Actually, no, not at all. For the most part, the storm has cleared up all across the area. You can see outside right now, beautiful, clear conditions from the D this evening and outside even right now. Very nice conditions continue. Here's a look at your current temperatures, 80 degrees in Tonopah, 84 at St. George. Your neighborhoods look a little something like this, mostly in the upper 80s for the downtown area. 92 degrees is your current temperature in Green Valley, and it's not going to be quite as cold uh, or it's going to be slightly colder overnight tonight compared to last night. And also mild conditions wind wise continue across the area. We're going to continue to see those skies clear up overnight. Sunny and warmer weather is expected for tomorrow and even warmer weather is headed our way as we start the first day of fall tomorrow. As we take a close look, most of the thunderstorm, in, uh, th thunderstorm activity continues to dissipate this evening, most of which appeared to be in Arizona and in portions of Southern California. We did see light showers just over the Southern Sierra, but other than that, no major storm activity, at least for our neck of the woods. Conditions overnight, like I said, a few degrees colder overnight compared to last night. Tomorrow, we're going to see slightly warmer weather by the afternoon. We're looking at temperatures around 97 degrees in Pahrump, 92 in Sandy Valley, 95 for uh, Boulder City. So warm weather is going to continue for tomorrow. And as we take a look at the Las Vegas area, here's a look at those temperatures. Still above normal with upper 90s expected in the forecast. That is our first day of fall. It certainly doesn't feel like fall. Triple digits in the forecast cast for the next few days and it looks like we are going to see a nice warm weekend headed our way with mild weather conditions overnight. We're going to take a really quick break. We'll be right back. Stay here with News 3.
Continuing coverage following breaking news of an officer involved shooting a North Las Vegas police officer shot. Now we understand two North Las Vegas police officers shot Metro Police assisting in this. This happening during a domestic violence situation that played out in front of children. And just a few hours ago and right now you're looking live at Canyon Springs High School where a campus has turned into a command center. You obviously see North Las Vegas police there holding down their stake of the parking lot. Metro expected to also be there as well as along with so many other first responders. Responders. As Lieutenant Bedwell was saying, the investigation, it is going to be complex tonight because they do have a deceased person, that person involved in that domestic dispute. We understand the neighborhood is on lockdown uh, and that neighborhood is just a stone throw from where you're seeing this live picture where it's going to be a command post and it's going to be where a lot of officers and emergency personnel will be stationed throughout the night. You can tune in to news3lv.com and we'll have updates throughout the night about the fate of the people who can't get in their neighborhood. And we'll have continuing coverage tonight on CW at 10 o'clock and on News 3 Live at 11. Well, let's lighten the mood, shall we? Pope Francis' first official trip to the U.S. It has begun. President Obama and the First Family, along with Vice President Joe Biden, was on hand to greet Pope Francis the moment he stepped foot on U.S. soil. The Pope will have an official meeting with President Obama at the White House tomorrow, and then on Thursday will address a joint session of Congress. After that, he will address the United Nations in New York and celebrate Mass at the World Meeting of Families in Philadelphia. And one prayer has been answered for a St. Louis boy living with a brain tumor as he gets to see Pope Francis this week. 12-year-old Brett Hobrick went through rounds of chemotherapy and radiation while still attending school this year. He says while his battle with cancer sidelined him from playing football, it opened his eyes to faith. With the help of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, he received tickets from the Archdiocese of Philadelphia to see Pope Francis when he comes to the city. That little boy says the trip and his recovery are truly <laughs> blessings. I hope I can like see him in person or like shake his hand. It'd be pretty cool to do that. I appreciate how God like gave me the recovery like he gave me such a good recovery. Like, a lot of kids don't have that. So many things to be grateful for. Pope Francis will deliver a mass in Philadelphia on Saturday. Mm. We leave you one more time tonight. Just a live picture of this neighborhood uh, right near Canyon Springs High School, where tonight children were terrorized in a domestic violence situation that ended with one person dead and two officers shot. And this picture says so much. You see there the flashing lights of this North Las Vegas police car. An officer standing guard, not allowing anyone to come in right now. This is an active police investigation. The domestic dispute they must look into. What happened there? And then ultimately why these two officers, how they were hurt. Again, we want to reiterate they are expected to recover. They're being treated at UMC. CW News at 10 and News 3 Live at 11 with a full wrap of what happened near that high school tonight.